Chicago requirements. All right. So for digital art on this day in September, following our course outline, we are going to be working on our first proving ground project. I did one video kind of introducing this quickly, but let's go through the unit module and do it properly. So this is going to be unit six. And what it's doing is making us reflect on our last two assignments, our landscape assignment, our creature assignment, which were the only two assignments in the class that are practicing the exact same skills, which is compositing from other people's pixels and creating original content, right? But one was a setting and one was a creature. Now we're reflecting on that, improving them as we've practiced these skills, learning some additional compositing skills to help. And we, this is what I call interrogating the subject. We're going to be interrogating both our landscapes with their Photoshop layers. So you're going to need your PSD of your landscape with all its different components, right? This was mine. I ended up not using that one, so I can delete that. That was based on an original sketch. And the way we're going to be interrogating it is, does the lighting really make sense? Does the atmosphere feel believable? Does this feel like an, a kind of air that we could breathe? How would we expect things to be moving in this, right? If some figurative content were to be put into it? to activate the landscape, like a creature or a vehicle. And then we're also going to be interrogating the assignment we just finished, our second assignment, which is our creature. So how are we interrogating that? Well, we are making sure that its edges are clear, that its textures and transitions, especially internally, make sense. So that when we put this creature into the landscape, just by dragging this clean PNG with no background turned on into our landscape, it can start to work believably. It's like bringing an actor on set, but in this case, it's like a little Jim Henson creature in a costume onto set. Now, by having them together in the same space, now we're interrogating, does the lighting make sense for both of them? Do they, does the anatomy of the creature match the setting because he needs to stand somewhere, right? And if I make him flying, I'm going to need to cast shadows underneath whatever is underneath him. And I might need to change his pose. And I, I get to interrogate what his scale is, or her scale is, or its scale, and where it might fit in the foreground, middle ground, background of this scene. So is it a big kind of Godzilla creature that just comes boom, 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 and then eats the foreground stuff and then leaves? Or it is, is it a mega kaiju kind of size creature that's so far in the background that it's affected by the atmosphere? So these are the things you're going to just decide before we even make any decisions about lighting or posing. We have to decide kind of where they are. Now there is one limitation to this in the proving ground, and that is that your creature takes up at least 25% of what I call the creature scape. So we can't use this to just hide the creature, where is Waldo style, in the image somewhere. So I'm going to delete that so I can show you from the beginning these steps. I'll even close my assignments so we can be reminded how to organize them and open them up within Photoshop. So the two requirements for this are the finished proving ground and then really making sure that you understand the directions. <laughs> so because a proving ground is different than an assignment. An assignment is a simple rubric of zero if you get nothing in by the deadline and you can't ever submit again because you've burned that chance. But one, if you submit anything out of three. Two, if you meet the requirements and you submit it. And three points if you meet all the requirements and you've done everything you can to engage the viewer and make it something 
of value, just like you want to do in your professional work, portfolio work for your clients or for your audience. Proving grounds are different because they're trying to teach a specific skill. And that skill is one aspect of creative problem solving, which if you get all four proving grounds and meet every rubric criteria, so basically get 100% on all four proving grounds, you will have earned your creative problem solving badge. This one's objective is to help you identify patterns. So these are all the things we're going to learn how to do. The ones that have to do with identifying patterns are making sense of the data. So looking back at assignment one and assignment two and making sense of the data. In particular, the resolution of your files, the pixel data, because these are raster images, and what presentation types, what modalities that allows for your data to be used for, whether it's for screen or for printing. Right. Recognizing the commonalities among seemingly unrelated situations. This is, these are not my own words. These are the, the badge credentials requirements, right? So how do you recognize commonalities among seemingly unrelated situations? Well, your creature is different than your landscape. Sometimes wildly different. But you know what else is also wildly different? An animated penguin and Julie Andrews. And yet, by understanding what's unrelated and what you can make match, they can put them together in the movie Mary Poppins, and you get kind of classic visual storytelling, right, of Mary Poppins with animated penguins. So the way we work and find the commonalities among seemingly unrelated situations is both our landscape and our creature deal with angles of lighting. And we're going to use light logic to understand where shadows would be, and we're also, they're going to also be breathing and occupying the same space. So we're going to play a little bit more with atmosphere and what are called texture fills. And then the last thing we need to do for identifying patterns for this proving ground, it's fairly complex, is to frame novel problems in familiar terms. So you can use your fantasy creature and put it in your fantasy landscape. That's the ideal situation because you've created both elements. You have transformed both elements, even though you've used other people's pixels. So anything you create using the two of them together is already your original transformative work. But if you don't have a finished landscape or a landscape that you're not happy with, you can put your creature design into a found landscape, right? But you might need to separate it into foreground, middle ground, background. You're going to have to kind of break it up and use your compositing skills still. And that's a new landscape for you, even though it's already an established one that belongs to someone else. So framing a novel problem in familiar terms is always asking, how does your creature interact with its environment? Because that is going to be a new situation. You put your fantasy creature into any established environment, like it, it, uh, it visits Avengers Tower, right? And you have to think, how would it live in Avengers Tower? Does it build a nest on the heliport? You know, how does it breathe? How does it breed? How does it eat? How does it hide? All that kind of stuff. So you're actually going to be doing some writing for the first time in an assignment other than a question of the day. Uh, a paragraph kind of describing, like you would for telling your backstory for a D&D &D character, reflecting on how your creature will interact with the environment you put it in. All right, in terms of making our character match the setting, match the, the lighting and the angle, we're going to learn how to use things like digital non-destructive overlay layers and texture overlays. So lots to do, and the whole goal is to create by the end, a clean and seamless composite image of a creature in a landscape. So here are some examples, and we went over these, but just notice all three of those requirements. The creature has to be believably and seamlessly in the landscape, matching angles of light and feeling like it's the same kind of atmosphere, the same kind of color, the same kind of general lighting, and their anatomy needs to fit the terrain. 
So their angle of anatomy, which sometimes we have to change, needs to feel like it's comfortably standing, sitting, crouching, flying over, whatever that setting is. Swimming. The next is recognizing the patterns and making sense of our data. So this is 18 inches by 12.5 physical inches at 300 pixels per inch. We're going to use standard resolutions for this. So standard print resolution is 300 pixels per inch. And when I set my image size to 300 pixels per inch, where I have resample unchecked so it doesn't recreate or create new pixels for me, it gives me these dimensions for this project. So that lets me know that it is big enough above 8 by 10 inches that it is print resolution. If it is below 8 by 10 inches, then it's big enough for screen resolution, which is 72 pixels per inch. So then I would put in 72 pixels per inch in image size with resample unchecked, and it will tell me how many inches it is at 72. And as long as it's at least 8 by 10 inches at 72 pixels per inch, then it's deliverable uh, at standard screen resolution. I call them standards, but they're actually standard minimums, because you can always have more, but we're going to learn what these professional standard minimums are. And then the last thing, how do you make sense of novel information? Well, this is where you write about how your creature interacts with this environment. You are making up stuff, but in that way you are making arguments for how these things connect. Even though it's a novel situation of a fantasy creature in a fantasy landscape. And no matter what the creature design is, what the landscape is, this is a problem that can be solved creatively by recognizing these things. All right. So really important that we're not just making an image for this, but we're meeting all those other requirements as well. This is an example found on Pixabay of a fantasy creature integrated into a fantasy landscape. It cheats a little bit, like a lot of special effect creature work cheats, by having a lot of distortion in the background, right? By having it be incredibly hazy and incredibly limited light. And that makes it easier to match the lighting and the angle of the anatomy. Challenges that are a little bit more novel when you blend kind of hand-drawn characters with live-action characters. I mentioned Mary Poppins. Here's a slightly newer example. This is the first Space Jam movie from 1996. They did it again with the second Space Jam movie with LeBron James. But here we have Michael Jordan with Looney Tunes characters. And notice they don't look like Looney Tunes characters normally look because for this Space Jam movie, they created this lighting system so they can light these 2D characters in 3D spaces. So you'll notice the cast shadows underneath the drawn characters to match the environment, the highlights on them. And even though it's fairly simple, that helps the angle of their anatomy, helps them occupy this three-dimensional space. Even though they really don't match the physical world at all, we're used to characters not matching their settings as long as they fit into the parameters of that reality with their anatomy and their lighting, we're fine with this. These are the rubrics. You want to score full marks on all three of them in order to earn your, your proving ground, and it's worth a total of 1.5 points. And we're going to be creating this and uploading this, which is called a non-destructive overlay layer. It doesn't look like much, but this is one requirement to post, just so I know you're actually learning the skills. And then this will be the one that qualifies for your proving ground. All right. So to do this, we can just follow the requirements. We want to make sure that it's large enough and we want to combine our creature with some sort of landscape. So I've completed both my creature project and I have it cut out pretty cleanly as the PNG. That is what I would upload to Canvas for assignment two. 
if you still need to correct it, right, because we just turned this in last class,